This experience happened when I was 12 years old. I developed flu-like symptoms. I coughed so badly that even my throat hurt when I breathed. I couldn't eat for a week. My mother called the doctor with concern in her voice. The doctor assured her that it was just a common flu. There have been many children with symptoms like mine recently. At my worst, I had severe pain in my chest every time I coughed. Later, my symptoms slowly disappeared. My parents thought I would recover soon. They continued to go out to work. So during the last few days of my illness, I was home alone. One of those afternoons, I was so thirsty that I walked from the couch to the kitchen sink. I felt that glass of water tasted sweeter than honey. When I turned around to go back into the living room, I went black and I passed out. I woke up later on the kitchen floor, and I don't know how long I was there. That night, I told my mother about the experience and she seemed very worried. The next day, I felt much better. But extraordinarily pale, my mother insisted on taking me to the doctor. I will never forget the look on the doctor's face. I remember the doctor telling my mother that her condition was serious and that she had to schedule surgery as soon as possible. Due to work, my father had left for another city that morning and could not be reached for several hours. My mother hesitated and the doctor again insisted that the situation was serious. The doctor recommended surgery that afternoon. The nurses did the pre-surgery preparations. My mother kept calling others, hoping to reach my father. My mother told me not to worry and I was wheeled into the operating room. Now I was scared and I started to cry. A mask with a screen was put on my face. I was told to breathe deeply, like blowing into a balloon. I cough and cry at the same time. Soon, everything went black. After a while, I realized that I could continue to think. I didn't know where I was, I was floating in a dark universe. Soon, I saw a group of glowing creatures flying around. They flew past me and then circled around me. The more scared I was, the closer they seemed to fly. They seemed to be laughing at me the whole time. I cried out in fear and I wanted to end it all. Then the situation changed and I started floating upward, away from the pixies. When my fear disappeared, I was floating alone in the universe again. I noticed a huge cone and I could see it spinning. I continued to float upward and soon I reached the top. There I hit an obstacle and could not continue moving upward. I stayed there for a while. Suddenly a hand reached out from the other side and he grabbed my arm. I was pulled to the other side. The man was about 20 years old and he looked very friendly. He acted surprised. He didn't know who I was. I just stood there. Then a few other people came around. They were all older. They asked me who I was, and I said my name. They also asked a lot of questions. They said, we are relatives. I also told them my father's name. Then they seemed to catch their breath, because they knew my father. Those who were older introduced them as my father's great-grandparents. They welcomed my arrival and were very happy to see me. The two grandmothers hugged me, trying to make sure I understood that this was a safe place because I was very confused about what was happening. They introduced me to the young man who pulled me in. He was my father's cousin. I seemed to gain strength here, and I felt warm and comfortable here. 
We were all surrounded by a white light, which was very pleasant. I also noticed that we all had a blue glow about us. They showed me some high-backed chairs that they would often sit in. To me, these chairs looked a bit like thrones. They showed me my father's future chair, and then they showed me one of my chairs. I sat on it for a while and it was very comfortable to sit on. I looked around curiously. Then I was shown every generation of the family, going back as far as a few hundred years. They all sat in their own chairs. The older generation did not come up to greet me, I don't know why. They told me to wait for a moment and that someone very special was coming to greet me. I saw an older woman who shone brighter than the others. Her love was more intense. And this was indeed a very special woman. I was completely enveloped by this woman's love. I felt very relaxed, like a baby asleep in its mother's arms. She told me many things. She said that she was a messenger from God, assigned to examine my life. She had the ability to enter my mind, and together we reviewed my past like a flickering movie. One of the images was of my sister grabbing my storybook. I hit her on the head with a stationary box. My sister cried a lot. I felt ashamed to see this. But no one will criticize you here. When it was over, this woman took me back to my grandparents and said it was time for me to make a decision. I could stay here with them, or I could go back and finish my life. My two great-grandmothers tried to convince me to stay, and they encouraged me to sit in the chair again, which I did. But soon I was up again, because I couldn't calm down inside. Then the woman told me that my mother would be very sad if I decided to stay. I told them that I loved my mother and I didn't want to make her sad, so I wanted to go back. One of my great-grandmothers reminded me that if I was sent back, it could ruin me because life on earth is so hard. The woman told her that she had to respect my own decision. All my relatives said, goodbye, to me and they instructed me to do well in school. They seemed to be telling me what my future would be. They said I would marry an engineer and would have a daughter. The young man who dragged me there at the beginning dropped me off at the place where I met him. Coming to the exit he reminded me, let me try to relax as I descend. The descent was not so pleasant, and it would be very fast. I went back to my body and remembered how it felt to land. I felt a lot of pain. Soon I opened my eyes and my mother was holding my hand. I immediately told her that I had met her grandmother and that she was very nice. She was stunned. The other relatives in the room reassured me that it was just a dream. I knew they were wrong. I understood that they chose not to believe what a child said. And I believed that time would give the answer.